Hi, I'm Chris Haig and this is the Fiddle Channel and today we're going to look at the Fiddle Capo. Now the Fiddle Capo or Capo, depending on which side of the pond you are, is um, one of the most valuable uh, tools I think that a fiddler can have, especially if you are improvising. Um, it's not an actual thing, it's not a, a, a machine that you stick on your fiddle, it's something that you use your fingers in the same way as a guitarist uses a capo or a capo. Um, and I often think that this um, idea, this technique, this lesson is the most valuable thing I can teach anyone uh, and I mean that seriously. <laughs> so what, what, what's we on about? The idea of the capo, the capo basically is you put your first finger on the root of the key that you're playing in. So let's say we're in the key of E, first finger goes down on an E and it goes across onto the next string up which is the A string and it's going to give us a B. So your fingers are going to remain locked there in the same way that a capo is locked onto a guitar. Um, now, if we're going up an E major scale, then we'll do it like this. And the first finger is not going to move. So you can either play the notes separately, or you can play them with drones. And part of the value of, the, of this thing is the ability to play drones easily. You may want to not do a drone on a couple of notes. This one. And this one. And it's easy enough with practice to just miss out those drones. Uh, notice that we're using the fourth finger. And... Um, Fourth finger is not ideal, a lot of fiddle players like myself have a weaker fourth finger than the other fingers. But as we, if we're going to use this in uh, higher positions, that fourth finger gets a lot easier to use. Now at the moment we're limited to one octave, um, but if you look down, still keeping the first finger on, you've also got these notes, second and third finger. And as you go on to the higher notes, uh, you can move the whole thing from there to there. So just by angling your finger around a bit, you now have the B and the F sharp. And then you can also drone. Now I find this is actually more useful, not on a major scale, but on a um, pentatonic or blues scale. So doing it on an E major pentatonic scale, we have... Um, or extending it. And with drones. I've got a video that explains all about the pentatonic scale and also one that explains the major blue scale, which is what we're going to try now. So let's try the whole thing um, played over a E blues backing. Now, um, in the key of E, it's not a huge advantage using this method, but as we get to more difficult keys, it does become much more valuable. So the key of B, which you're often going to meet in bluegrass, 
We're going to start with the first finger on the B and onto the F sharp. And there's the one octave. Um, you can use the same fingering as that. One, two, three, three, one, two, four. Uh, but in second position and a lower octave. So putting your first finger again on the root, but on the lower root. So we're using the same fingering as we used here. And indeed it's the same fingering we started off in the key of E. And as soon as you're out of first position and uh, determined not to use any open strings, all you have to think about is the relationship to, to that first finger, to that root. And you can forget entirely about what key you're in and about what the names of all the notes are. Um, and when you've done this a few times in different keys, you'll realize how easy it is to improvise you thinking solely about finger positions and not about anything else. So let's try this in the key of B over uh, the bluegrass song Love is Like a Flower. We'll start in this position. And so on and the key of B now becomes just as easy as the key of E and um, to kind of underline the importance of this let's try something horrendous let's do the uh, let the easiest of uh, jazz tunes diner uh, but we're going to do it in da 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 C sharp <laughs> so uh, we're not going to have any open strings we're going to start on C sharp second finger replace it with C sharp first finger and then we have or third finger C sharp first finger C sharp okay here goes Dinah Now notice that I also did a third octave, so instead of there, replace the fourth finger with first finger. And you have your new capo, although in fact this capo only has one string. So as you can see, it really does make every key as easy as every other key, providing you're able to accurately and quickly get your finger onto the root of this difficult key. Uh, and it takes away all the thoughts about chords, about what notes you're playing. Uh, it all comes down to finger movements, um, which I think you'll agree is quite a wonderful thing. Hope you found this useful. There is a sheet that goes with this. And if you would like a copy of that, then do email me. My email address is in the description. And if you want to get a hold of all of my PDFs and or help support my work in producing these videos, do please consider joining me on Patreon. Thank you for watching. I'll see you again soon.